Welcome back everyone to the second video of the Kotlin Flows playlist and in the previous video we had some theory of what Kotlin Flows are so if you didn't watch that video then I highly recommend you to watch that first so you just have a basic understanding of what flows are. Now we're going to give an example or actually two examples of what flows are. So in these two examples the first one will be just for returning data so we suppose we are getting some data from an API or a database or somewhere like so and then in the second example, we'll create a countdown timer. So let's get started with the first example. That is going to be a function that returns a flow. In that flow, emits multiple values over time. So let's say fun get. Of course, this is an empty Android project. It doesn't matter whether you use Jetpack Compose or XML. It doesn't matter. The flows are a Kotlin framework feature. So they would work with Jetpack Compose and XML as well. So we say get data, for example. And that's a flow and my function will return a flow this one and that flow is of type string so we actually define what type we want to return and then we have actually two ways to do that so we can just say return flow like this and then we start emitting our values here or we can just say instead of this since our function will return a flow and we're going to define the flow here we can just say is equal to flow like this and then we can emit our values here it's really the same thing and to keep things simple i'm going to do it the very simple way like this because it's the same thing and then the first thing we want is to emit values as we did here in the theory we said we can emit multiple values over time and then we get notified so our view model our ui or anything gets notified when we emit new values so the first thing we want to emit that we are loading the data because we're going to create this exact example so we start loading now so we say emit this one this uh, suspend function that comes from flows actually and then this one will emit a string because we said this flow is of type string and then let's say start loading like this and then after one second so let's say delay 100 milliseconds so after one second let's say this is the time it took us to just load the data we then want to do another thing which is telling that we got the data so let's say got data like this and then we want to emit another value let me create space here that is now we start filtering the data so start filtering data like this so here again we take some time to filter the data and then we just say data is ready like this and then let's say we return the data right here so basically this is a type of string and normally this would be a, type, a more complex type which includes all of these things like when we start loading when we start filtering uh, and that's a whole nother thing but for the simplicity now we just have a bunch of strings that tell us what we are doing so data is ready and we, let's say if we have some global instance or variable for that data then we just say uh, I don't know something like data is now equal to some data that we got right here and then just once we notify our view model then our view model will then access this one because it knows now it's no longer null or it now has the data and then the last thing we want to do is we want to stop loading so we say stop loading because now we have the data we need and we can now remove this one so this is now what I mean by a pipeline that returns or emits multiple values over time when we need them. So the same as just we did here, as you can see, is just a pipeline that emits multiple values and we, it's exactly what we are doing here. This is our pipeline. It, it is emitting multiple values. And now to get that data or to collect actually the data, it's come right here in our onCreate function and we can just say get dataflow dot we have this function collect but it is a suspend function and we can't use it right here that's why we will need to use ROM blocking and if you don't know what ROM blocking is you you can go to my coroutines playlist where I explained these things which are just some coroutine concepts so we need to use it inside the ROM blocking so we say collect not actually this one but like this we have brackets and now we get the data so we just say data like this and that's it now we have the data now the only thing I'm going to do is actually printing that data. So log D, the tag is, I already created the tag here and just say received data like this. So now let's run the app and see how that works. Uh, 
as you can see, I'm getting the data when exactly I need it. So I start loading and then I got the data, I start filtering it and then the data is ready and now I stop loading. And normally this might take more time. For example, if this is an API call, then it might take like two seconds and then just getting the data, we don't actually need to take any time. You just say 500 milliseconds and then filtering might take some time, like a second. And so, so it just works like this. And then if you run the app and see how now it will work after I change this time, so start loading. And then as you can see, there was a little bit of delay because that would take some time. So that's actually how we can emit values with flows. Now the second example I'm going to create is a countdown timer. So let's create it. And first of all, let's just have a variable that tells us the time. So let's say start time or the time we start in. So start time is 10 seconds, for example, equals 10. And then another function, so fun countdown timer is of type, I mean, it returns a flow of type integer and it is equal to flow like this. So it's actually now the same thing. It's just the syntax differ is different. So this one returns a flow and then we just start emitting values. So we say emit our start time and then that will happen every second. So we have a delay of a second and then each time we emit a value, we decrease our start time by one. So next time we'll emit nine and then eight and then so on. And then when we get to a zero, so basically we don't want to emit like negative values. So that's why we'll say while start time is greater or equal to zero, we'll be emitting. Otherwise, we'll just stop. And now let's collect this one. So countdown timer flow and right here. Let's skip this received or let's just say time, for example, and then let's clear the logcat and run the app. So 10, 9, 8, and so on. It goes all the way to zero. So this is it now for this video. And we have these two examples of flows. In the next video, we get to see flow operators and then we have a lot more to actually cover from state flows, shared flows, and we also have another function which is called collect latest and we'll see all of that. But in the next video will be about flow operators. So see you in that video and bye.